हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ज्ञान संपदा सो फ्रॉम प्रीवियस सम क्लासेस वी आर मेनली डीलिंग विद द कंडेंस मैटर फिजिक्स टॉपिक वेयर वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फेरोमैग्नेटिज्म सो वी हैव अंडरस्टूड मेनी डिटेल्स अबाउट फेरोमैग्नेटिक मटेरियल्स एंड रीच्ड टिल ब्लॉच रेस टू थ्री बाई टू लॉ इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास एंड फ्रॉम अवर टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ अनदर कंसेप्ट which is related to ferromagnetism which is anti ferromagnetism so again from the word we can observe that there is something relation with ferromagnetism but the word anti is involved anti means opposite so in our today's class we will understand what factor or what parameter is going to be opposite with respect to ferromagnetic material so let's start our today's class of anti ferromagnetism where for the first we are going to deal with the main characteristic properties of anti ferromagnetic material so why actually it is called as anti ferromagnet let us study so whenever we consider any magnetic material first we understand some details about the magnetic moments which are called as the spins and if we consider anti ferromagnetic material the characteristic property is that the spins are anti parallel so as such if we remember about ferromagnetic material we know that the spins or the magnetic moments are parallel to each other which is the characteristic leading us to spontaneous magnetization but anti ferromagnetism means anti parallel so each spin or we can say the neighboring spins are anti parallel to each other which means they are going to balance each other so if we look at the magnetic order we can observe that one spin which is pointing in upward direction will be balanced by another spin which is pointing in downward direction so as such net moment will be zero as the magnetic dipoles are anti parallel to each other so this is the magnetic order which is the main characteristic property of anti ferromagnetic material and i hope that why it is called as anti ferromagnetic material is clear based on the orientation of the spins but what is responsible for this anti parallel orientation is the question so when the distance between the interacting atoms is very small then the exchange forces which is the main force which is acting those forces produce a tendency to anti parallel arrangement of neighboring spin dipole moments so this exchange force is going to act on the spins which makes the spin orient in anti parallel direction which leads to the phenomena of anti ferromagnetism where spins are anti parallel to each other so the main thing is that the distance between the two atoms need to be very small which is going to be responsible for exchange interaction leading to anti parallel arrangement of neighboring spins and such systems were first investigated by neil and bitter and later the concept was extended by van leck and whatever details were given about the magnetic system was mainly theoretical not practical one so these three lewis neil bitter and van vleck were the three persons who were responsible for theoretical development of anti ferromagnetism then based on our previous knowledge we had understood some details about exchange interaction where we got the exchange energy e exchange is equals to minus 2j dash into summation of si dot sj where j dash is called as exchange integral and in case of anti ferromagnetic material that exchange integral j dash is negative that is the another property so if we consider or compare with the ferromagnetic material we know that if exchange integral is positive then it is going to lead us to ferromagnetism whereas if exchange integral is negative then we have anti ferromagnetism 
So this graph is according to the Slater criteria which we have already studied while studying ferromagnetism. So the details you can get it from the playlist named ferromagnetism under which we have a separate class on Slater criteria. So this is another difference between ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic material. So then moving further, we have studied that theoretical development was done by these three persons, but experimentally antiferromagnetism was first discovered as a property of manganese oxide by Bizet, Square and Tsai in the year 1938. So the practical investigation was done by these three scientists mainly on the sample of MnO. So manganese oxide is again a antiferromagnetic material. And if we find out certain materials which show antiferromagnetic nature, then it is seen that antiferromagnetism is exhibited by many compounds involving transition metals. So transition metals we know the outermost orbital is unfilled. So there are certain number of unpaired electrons. So those are going to mainly contribute for antiferromagnetism. Then coming to the very important property is the characteristic property of antiferromagnetic material. So most characteristic property of polycrystalline antiferromagnetic substance is that its susceptibility shows the maximum as a function of temperature. Susceptibility is nothing but chi which explains about the capacity of the material to get magnetized when a magnetic field is applied. And if we understand about the nature of susceptibility as a function of temperature, we observe that as temperature goes on increasing, susceptibility goes on increasing and after certain temperature denoted as Tn, the susceptibility is going to decrease. That is, above Tn we can observe the paramagnetic nature, but below Tn we are observing this nature. So here clearly we can observe that when temperature dependence is studied, we can observe a maxima point. And this is the main property of antiferromagnetic material. So if we want to investigate whether a material is ferromagnetic paramagnetic or antiferromagnetic, if temperature dependence is studied, then whenever the susceptibility shows a maximum, we can say that the material is antiferromagnetic. And this characteristic feature can be qualitatively explained using a simplified model which is called as two sublattice model. So in short, if we want to understand Two sublattice model is a model where we are having two different types of atoms from two different sublattices which are interpenetrated such that the neighboring spins are going to remain opposite. So if we look at this diagram, we can say that the blue atoms which are present at the corners, they may have spin in upward direction whereas the nearest neighbor of blue atoms is the red colored atom. And antiferromagnetism means the spins need to be antiparallel. And according to two sublattice model, if the spins on the corners are in upward direction, then the spin which is present in the centered atom or the body centered atom will have downward spin direction. So both are antiparallel to each other and Susceptibility as a function of temperature or any other feature about antiferromagnetic material which is the characteristic property of antiferromagnetic material can be understood based on two sublattice model. So more details about it will be dealt in next class. But if we want to understand some details then let us consider one example. So another example for antiferromagnetic material is MnF2 that is manganese fluoride and as such it is a ionic crystal where Mn has plus 2 charge and fluoride has minus charge but the number of atoms will be 2. 
So here electrons are transferred from Mn to F atoms which is more electronegative and manganese ions are mainly magnetic and we know that manganese comes under transition metal group which is nothing but D block element. So manganese ions are magnetic because of their incomplete 3D shell and are distributed over FCC structure. So the crystal structure is of FCC and if we consider MnF2 then it is antiferromagnetic because the ions at the corners are going to point in one direction while the ions at the center of the cube that is the body center of the cube are going to point in opposite direction. So this is as we have just seen in the previous slide of two sublattice model. So as such manganese ion is magnetic but when it is going to include the fluoride ion so when it becomes MnF2 it is antiferromagnetic. So here we can consider a crystal which contains two types of atoms let us say A and B which is distributed over two interlocking lattices. So here we can observe that they are just interlocking but not overlapping on each other. It is just moving half the way inside so that the corner atom of this sub lattice will act as a body centered atom for this sub lattice. So if you consider any one part also we can observe the previous diagram itself where there are atoms which are present on the corners with one type of spin. Let us say it has atom A whereas this B atom will be having the opposite spin which will be in downward direction. So this is how two sub lattice interlocking or interpenetration takes place. It will not be 100% of overlapping but just half a way round. So here the interaction between the atoms be such that atom A spins tend to line in upward direction anti parallel to the spins of the B atoms which is in downward direction. And the main thing why we study this two sub lattice model is to get the characteristic property which is the characteristic curve of antiferromagnetic material and for MnF2 we can observe the same nature itself. So when we plot a graph of susceptibility as a function of temperature in Kelvin we can observe that susceptibility is having two different components one is chi perpendicular and other one is chi parallel. So if we consider both the contributions then we will have a graph which will be again in between these two lines. So here we can say that at lower temperature this interaction is very effective and in the external field the resultant magnetization will be small because chi is magnetization by applied field. So if external field is considered then also the magnetization is small at lower temperature. And as the temperature is raised the efficiency of interaction becomes less pronounced and thus the susceptibility is going to increase. So as such we can observe the chi perpendicular is almost constant but chi parallel is going to vary and as the temperature goes on increasing because of the less pronounced efficiency of interaction between the spins susceptibility is going to increase which we can observe in this graph and finally it is going to reach the maximum and this is the critical temperature after which the spins are no more anti parallel to each other which means they are going to become free and above this temperature spins are free means it is going to show paramagnetic behavior and this temperature is named as Neel temperature which is denoted as Tn after the French physicist Louis Neel who got the Nobel Prize for his work in the year 1970. So what happens here is the question. So at this Neel temperature the thermal energy becomes very large 
to destroy the microscopic magnetic ordering within the material. So as the temperature goes on increasing, the spins which are anti-parallel to each other, they are going to get so much disturbed that their magnetic order don't remain same. So the thermal energy which means increase in temperature is responsible for destruction of this magnetic order which is microscopic magnetic order because spins are microscopic in nature because each spin is with respect to the electrons of the system. So at Tn completely this anti-parallel magnetic order will be destroyed which means at this transition temperature Tn totally antiferromagnetic behavior is lost and further on increase of temperature we observe 100% randomness in the spins which means about Tn the material is going to act as paramagnetic material. So all these things are explained and most direct experimental evidence for the basic picture of the above model which is the two sublattice model has been obtained from neutron diffraction experiment. So whatever theory is explained is again confirmed experimentally by the use of neutron diffraction studies. So these are some of the details about the characteristic properties of antiferromagnetic material starting from the nature of spin coming to the characteristic property, the history as well as the model which is again experimentally accepted up to certain order. So this is it for the today's class and in our next class we will be dealing with the two sublattice model which is nothing but the molecular field theory of antiferromagnetic material. So see you in our next class for more details on antiferromagnetism. Till then study well, stay tuned and thank you for watching.